Welcome back to Art Talk with your artist, Kevin Long. Today's discussion is going to involve Mac Miller. Rest in peace, Mac Miller. Mac Miller was born in 1992 as Malcolm James McCormick. Malcolm James McCormick was a Jewish kid born in Pittsburgh Pittsburgh PA and he went to the same high school as Wiz Khalifa he grew up obsessed with music and he had mixtapes and collaborations with people even in high school his father was an architect and his mom was a photographer so he had natural talent he really was not um, you know he wasn't an average kid I think I think he had a little talent and he basically you know we got exposed to it later that's what happened with Mac Miller and his talent was apparent because even in high school he was releasing mixtapes and things like that and he really got discovered based on you know a lot of things he put out early and that really was the same quality he was offering or similar you know to now except he was a little more mature with his rhyme skills and the way he would spit so his father was an architect, his mom was a photographer, he had a bar mitzvah and because of his religion he called himself the coolest Jewish rapper. The coolest. Now you know there was other Jewish rappers other than just Mac Miller. But the only Jewish rappers I ever heard of before him were the Beastie Boys. The Beastie Boys were from my era, and I'm dating myself, Saul Gravy. But um, he was musically gifted. Mac Miller was musically gifted. And in high school, he learned how to play the guitar. Then after he learned the guitar, he taught himself how to play the drums, the piano, and the bass. And that's a lot of instruments right there. You know, it takes talent to play the piano. Now, I don't know how he sounded on the piano, but I know that's a difficult thing to master, is the piano. You know, Aretha Franklin, who I just did, a tribute to on the page you might want to check it out it's an interesting video all of them are interesting really and uh, she played the piano she was self-taught as well not comparing Mac Miller to Aretha Franklin in no regard what I'm saying is people that are self-taught on the piano usually are powerful musicians later you know so I think this guy Mac Miller was on his way to doing something big because he had musical talent and you know being in the music industry I think people rarely these days have talent especially the music industry he's in they're not multi-talented like that usually they can spit they write and people you know they might produce they might make their own beats and certain things like that they might have a sense of style but other than that a lot of people don't have a lot to contribute in terms of talent in hip-hop you know so I think he had a lot to offer because once you do things like play piano and all that stuff he you know it's a lot to contribute 
So you're going to have another opinion about your music. You're going to have a lot of creative ability in your music. And that's what I think he had, you know, what we lost. I think that's what we lost, was that creative power that he had. And how he was getting ready to blow up. He had blown up, but I'm just saying, like, you know, that was in a short time. Imagine what he would have accomplished over a period of time, which is what makes me wonder what really happened in the situation. So getting back to his upbringing, Mac Miller, being musically gifted and having all those abilities to play those instruments, he was obsessed with music. Now, he released these mixtapes in high school. And he would go to high school, but he wouldn't really be in class from what I understand. He would go to school, and when he showed up to school, he would basically because you know he didn't come a lot so I say when he showed up he would basically give out CDs they say allegedly and he would freestyle with all his friends all his homies he would be freestyling most of the time during the day at school and he rarely went to class according to you know what I saw the information I read and found and Mac Miller you know when you talk about school when he was in class he would write rhymes all day he wouldn't really be participating in the class he would write his rhymes and you know work on his lyrics in the class which really is interesting because that's something that all creative people when they were in school, they would do the creativity side and not focus on the school side. So everybody that's talented has gone through that, I think. Because when I was in school, I would draw people looking funny. I don't know what came, how that came about, but, oh yeah, I know how it came about, because people were roasting me. So they would try to roast me. And then me, in turn, I would roast them artistically. So I would draw them looking funny and, you know, clown them and roast them on the drawing. And people hated that. So that's why I would do it when they would talk about me. But back to Mac Miller. Or Malcolm James McCormick. Now, his debut, Slide, Blue Slide Park, was the name of it. It was number one. That was his debut CD. And it was number one on the Billboard 200. And that's a big, that's a big thing to be number one on the Billboard 200. That's hot. And that launched him into international stardom. Then this summer, 2018, he released an album called Swimming, which was number three on the Billboard 200. And that too is serious. When you talk about people releasing albums, you can't easily make it that far on the Billboard 200. You have to really have a following and people be into your work. And that's what's going on with him. Yeah, people loved that album. And he had his own reality show. And he dated Ariana Grande. He accomplished a lot in his little time that he was famous. You know, and that's why people take it for granted when he's artists get famous 
they take it for granted because they see them all of a sudden and they've never seen them before. And then also they catapult through the stardom and that kind of shocks people. So people, you know, it's hard to relate to some of the stuff these people go through, you know. But uh, when you talk about success, he had it. He had it. Now, success comes with negativity too, a little bit at times for people. And I see it came with some negativity for him. What happened to him was Mac Miller, he was on Larry King and he admitted his drug problems on Larry King on national TV and it wasn't a problem for him you know some people would have been embarrassed by that and hid it from the society or from his fans you know because he has a brand that he has to defend and he has to stand for his brand so you have, kind of have to watch what you say but I guess through his music people can relate to what he's saying because a lot of times he would, you know, he would express himself that way. And he would really talk about drugs in his records or in his music and his projects and stuff. So, so Mac Miller had nothing to hide from the public. He had nothing to hide. And when you talk about transparency, this guy, he had a lot of transparency. He would share everything about his life to people. So it was no surprise when um, when he was telling people about his breakup with Ariana Grande. But when you talk about their relationship, you have to talk about a lot of things that went on behind the scenes, you know, and some of the success they had. So that's what we're going to talk about, you know. So, but Mac Miller, he said on Larry King that it was his state of mind that messed him up. And he was depressed. And that's why he did so many drugs because Mac Miller got high. He did a lot of drugs, from what I understand. And Lean, he definitely, um, he definitely was hitting the Lean. And the Lean is, you know, that's some serious, that's a serious thing, man. If Methazine is a powerful thing in the rap industry, and it's being promoted by a lot of rappers. And that's the, stuff that gave Lil Wayne seizures and a couple of people seizures. Lean killed DJ Screw. Or DJ Screw killed himself drinking lean. Sipping lean. And that lean is being promoted by people like Future, Wheezy, a lot of people, just to name a couple, because I ain't trying to, you know, go all day talking about people that use lean, but yeah, they use lean, and that's, you know, part of his demise, I believe. I believe that was part of his demise, is the lean and the drugs and everything, but uh, I had to jump right into that. I don't know why I jumped right into that. But the lean was, you know, that was messed up. That was part of what messed him up, as far as I'm concerned. So anyway. Mac Miller was sued. He had a lot of legal issues. And he was sued by a 70s band called Aquarian Dream. And he also was sued by New York rapper and famous producer Lord Finesse who is from my era. Uh, you know what he said? He said, man, Lord Finesse is one of my idols. 
Yo, that's that's funny. The dude is one of his idols, and he had to sue him. So that's why he used his some of his stuff because he's one of his idols, you know. But keep that in mind. You have to go to people and pay them. Okay. So all you guys sampling stuff, James Brown and all this, you know, these rock bands, are you sampling other rap songs and all stuff on your records and on your projects? You have to consider that. You have to pay these people. So that's just, you know, common sense. And decency. If you got a sense of decency, you're going to break somebody off when you have some success with their concept their original intellectual property so you might want to just help somebody when you got helped bless somebody else as you were blessed and that concept is something you have to be raised with or something you know people don't just have that naturally they have to be taught that I believe you know decency racism prejudice things like that all that is taught to children I believe so you either have it or you don't now mind you in the midst of all this Mac Miller and this is all the summer of 2018 right now like just just happened and Mac Miller is arrested for a DUI when he hit and run a electrical pole. <laughs> that's not not you know that I'm laughing at him. I'm just saying that's a funny situation to be in, and it's very extremely embarrassing that type of situation. He ran into a pole drunk. Not a person hitting him or anything. It wasn't another person. Hold on, let me let me put this little moon on her neck, cause you know she has this little moon on her neck. You gotta include that. It wouldn't be complete without that. So yeah, he had all these problems, and you know. I couldn't foresee all of this because he had a lot of success. Like when he when he was with Ariana Grande, they did a Christmas song together. They did a lot of things and it was like that success from that and being around her, I'm not sure what a righteous person she is and all that stuff, but either way, being around a successful person like her, you can learn a lot. So I would think that he would have picked up on a lot of things from her. And she could guide him in the right direction. But a lot of times, you know, dudes that are dating females, they don't listen to the female a lot when it comes to guidance. Because they want to be the dominant one in the relationship because they're the man. You know, it's kind of like when men are in relationships and their woman makes more money than them. It's, it's kind of like that. It's a weird situation for the man. And especially if they've never been in that situation before. So anyway, I don't know his situation or if that's all true pertaining to Mac Miller. But, yeah, that's what went down. So, Mac said in an interview that he led a certain life for 10 years and almost no consequence came to him so he led a certain life for 10 years without any consequence or barely any and that's a statement that stuck with me when he said that I was like yep he was challenging fate in other words not that he didn't care but it's a daring thing to do like I don't know it's hard to explain but some people like to jump out of planes. Some people like to touch animals that just don't look friendly or whatever, you know. 
And all you could do is look at that and say, that wouldn't have been me jumping out of that plane. You know, when the people die or they get caught in an avalanche or something from hiking or something like that. And, you know, you like to yourself, it wouldn't have been me. But he led a certain life, he said, for 10 years and faced almost no consequence. And that says a lot about mentality and things like that. So it also says a lot about Ari Ariana Grande for, you know, being with him because she's daring, I think. But that's a whole nother video. Now, Mac Miller's early musical influences, he said, were the Beastie Boys, of course, because they were a Jewish rap group. Actually, the first Jewish rap group ever like ever and he also was influenced by a tribe called quest lauren hill big l and outcast in school he was listening to a lot of this along with making mixtapes and things like that he had a, a little bit of musical influence he stuff he would listen to and he liked along the way now, he said, back then, I was a grimy ass rapper. All my ish was angry white rapper, 10th grade angst. And that was his statement about how he used to rap. Now, with his success later, with the Blue Slide Park. It was released November 8, 2011. That was, that went certified gold. And that means 100,000 copies in the first week he got. That's mean right there. That's mean. A lot of people can't even say that. You know. And even his newest project. was just under Drake like his his level of popularity on the charts was just under Drake people like that and Ty Dolla Sign like that was all his competition and people that he was just lower than in terms of his numbers so he was doing it Mac Miller, we took a loss with Mac Miller. I think he was growing into what he was going to be. You know. Yeah, he went platinum. He was on the double XL freshman list. He did a lot. He did a lot with that. That catapulted him. All that stuff catapulted him. But when he was with Ariana Grande, I thought that he was doing the best. They wrote a Christmas song together. When he got on the track, The Way, with her, that song was a huge hit for them. That song was a huge hit for them, The Way. That changed his whole... Well, it added a lot of fans for him, I'm sure, from her crowd. And it always does when they cross over and do records with other people and they do music with other artists. That always helps their popularity. So, a few albums later, from 2013 to 2016, he left his label and went independent again. And he had successful records, but he wasn't trying to stay with that label for some reason. And once he went independent, he released a solo, I mean an independent album called Faces. And Faces was very controversial for him because he was very honest about drug use, drug abuse abusing drugs premature death he had some crazy 
I guess, themes on some of the songs. Some of the stuff he talked about was kind of wild. And Pace is also got him signed to a huge deal. I think it was Faces on the strength of Faces and a lot of, you know, things he released in the past. But he signed a ten million dollar deal with the, to this record label, and that was powerful. But behind the scenes, he had a lot of different issues and negative things going on at the same time as the success of the album. So with the DUI in the hills, Beverly Hills, the Hollywood Hills, I mean, and he had a car accident hitting the pole that affected him. When he came out to jail in Van Nuys, California, when they released him, he had his head covered. It was TMZ was there. I won't forget that. I remember that. And TMZ was trying to interview him and his friend that was coming out of the jailhouse. And he had his head covered. He didn't want to show his face. I guess he was busted after sleeping in that cell so long. He didn't feel like, you know, he was handsome enough or something. So he didn't show his face. He covered up. You'll see it if you go check it out when he got released from jail. That was a famous incident, famous situation with him. And after speaking of premature death and drugs and all that stuff on that album and signing that deal, that solidified, you know, some of the stuff he was saying. Like, it made probably him feel like you know, you could say that kind of thing and speak in those kind of subjects and not hurt anybody. And I think he didn't feel like he was doing wrong. He was being honest with people. You know, and keeping it real is a phrase that, you know, went a long way. But they also have the opposite on YouTube and everywhere about when keeping it real goes wrong. Okay? So. Now, back to Ariana Grande, because she's in this painting, too, for a reason, because there's a lot of information <laughs> with Ariana Grande, and I'm laughing because she really was powerful in his work, in his eyes, and in his career. I think she affected him, and if you agree or disagree, write it in the comments below. So I'll know who's, who's, you know, saying what and how you feel. Because a lot of people feel like he killed himself over Ariana Grande. I'm not saying I feel that way. I'm saying people, I've heard people say that and read and media and, you know, some people's idea of what happened. When they tell you. They always mention Ariana Grande being his demise and you know how once he broke up with her he was messed up and that's why he killed himself doing drugs so imagine the guilt on her you know if anything I'm not sure how she feels if she's feeling guilty or not and absolutely she shouldn't you know I don't think she you know was the cause of his death I think that him being with her and her breaking up with him or them splitting the way they did I think that you know you can't blame her you know people come and go in people's lives and that's how it is but when you speak of Mac Miller he dated one girl from his junior year all the way until he met Ariana Grande so when he commits he commits. So he said she even inspired his album Macadelic, which Macadelic was hot. Macadelic, he said, it's all about us. This love and drugs stuff. He said, 
Love and drugs are the same. And he loved her like a drug. And he also loves drugs. So he was comparing the two as if to say, she's killing him. What the heck? I was wondering when I read that, what was he talking about? So he was saying, also, I mean, he re-explained it another time in the interview. He was saying that um, love and drugs are the same thing. His relationship was effing him up. It made him think of himself as a bad person. So he felt bad about the relationship. Yeah. And then he said, that's why we no longer together. Man, that's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. They broke up. So now, when people ask him about her engagement, I notice he don't have a lot to say. He doesn't. He just kind of says he wishes the best for them, and then he keeps it pushing. Or kept it pushing, rather. And that was his approach to, you know, the questions that they gave him. But I think because he dated one girl for so long, it says a lot about his character and how he is as a person. You know, when he falls in love, anyway. And a lot of guys are like that. They one woman men. And they commit to the woman and, you know, that's it. To the female that they're with. And they fall deep in love. That's why they chose her. Because they were able to love her like that. And they really were attracted to her like that. And she's a beautiful young lady. Ariana Grande. I'm going to tell you how beautiful Ariana Grande is. In my opinion. She was at Aretha Franklin's funeral. And the preacher, they created a scandal around the preacher hugging her. Because he hugged her so tight. And I think he touched her breasts or something like that in the hug. And, you know, she said in the press that he did nothing wrong. But the press blew the old head preacher up because he was touching on her like that. He hugged her and brought her to the podium during the performance, during the, the ceremony. You have to go and see Aretha's homegoing ceremony, Aretha Franklin, Queen of Soul. And I did a tribute to her also on here. And it's called Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul. Being Art Talk by Kevin Long. Yeah, check that out. But anyway, when Arianda had her Manchester bombing incident, he was there for her at the hospital, I mean at the uh, airport, to support her. And also kiss on her, you know, he had to kiss her and all that, you know. So, uh, yeah, but there were a lot of things he was dealing with, issues and problems behind the scenes. So, he crashed his G-Class Benz, Mercedes Benz, into a pole in the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then ran, you know. The thing about it is he ran, but nobody got hurt. That's the blessing of it all. He Nobody got hurt. That was a good thing, except the truck. But he shut down all social media after that. All his social media, he shut it down after that. Mac Miller. So, I don't know if he was embarrassed or what happened. I know I would have been embarrassed. But, yeah, we don't know what happened with him with that. He just shut it down. He was silent on social media, totally. So then, Ariana tweeted, take care of yourself, and I'll always support you, or something like that. And then, she went public about breaking up with Mac Miller. She had to go public, I think, after. You know, to let people know, because they all have fans, and she said... I'm not a babysitter or a mother. 
And no woman should have to feel like that. That's what she tweeted. She said, he has major problems. And for years, she supported his sobriety. For years. And some of his, his last post on social media, there was a record player playing his record, one of his tracks. And it says something about going to heaven and he's still getting high. And you might want to research it. This is to send you to them because I'm not going to tell you every little thing because I want you to go and look. I, I encourage everybody that's watching this to go and read up on Mac Miller and find out what his last post was on social media. And then get in the comment section and tell me what it was. What he said. What was the lyrics in that song that was so crazy about heaven and I would appreciate that and he said I'm going to heaven or something about heaven and how he's still getting high that's the lyric that I'm talking about so you check it out and one one comment that Mac Miller made that stuck with me was when he said if you overdose you don't go down in history you just die and Mac Miller was found overdosed in his San Fernando home Fernando home San Fernando rather on September 7 2018 So if you want to leave your condolences, comments, your favorite moments, Mac Miller moments, down below, feel free. Your favorite Mac Miller memories, feel free. This is a tribute to Mac Miller, and thank you for viewing this, and please like, subscribe, and share this video.